Good evening and welcome to Irish Web TV. We'd like to thank Positive Age for the use of the fantastic studio here in Drummond and to Syro for the use of the broadband. Well, what times we are living in, folks. We've had COVID-19, we've had Brexit, we've had a lot of things on our plate. But the latest, most disturbing thing is the, uh, the, raising, the raising of his ugly head of racism. And uh, racism is a very big issue. And uh, with the death of George Floyd in America, it has taken USA by storm. And the repercussions of that have spread all over the world. Demonstrations of BLM, Black Lives Matter, have taken place in our own country here in Ireland and even in our own town. I've got two very special guests with me here in the studio this evening and I'd like to welcome Marissa Gold Goldstone and uh, Marissa is a community activist and she's been living here in Cavan for 20 years and she's from Africa, isn't that right? That's right, uh, South from Africa. Africa. She's from South Africa and we'd like, no, no stranger to Irish Web TV, I'd like to welcome Stanley Waneri and Stanley is also a community, a community activist and uh, I think Stanley has been in Ireland for 21 years now but he's been living in Cavan for 11. Good evening folk. Thank you. Evening. You're very welcome. Now racism, we googled briefly and we just threw out a very sort of a limp definition of racism. We, we went to the dictionary, we got words like racism pertains to prejudice, discriminationary, uh, antig an anta uh, antagonism of the, of the basic, uh, of the, on the base of a person's colour or the group that they are a member of, but it's much bigger than that. Stanley, we saw this week, we saw the video, everybody has seen the video of that dreadful happening that was videoed and went viral around the world of the death of George Floyd. Are you, are you amazed at this? Um, I'm not gonna use the word amazed, uh, it's, it's a very sad uh, moment when I saw the video. It's also sad that it did happen. What I meant to say was, Stanley, are you shocked at this now, at this stage of what you've seen in, all over the world? Well, I'm not shocked because everybody knew this was coming. Um, let's, let's go back last year. You remember the death of another black man in America? Let's go back six months prior to that death. Uh, the another death of the young boy. You remember the young boy that had the baby gun? Uh, go back again two years ago, another guy that was pinned down and that was murdered. It's on and on and on. So for this to get to this point and um, uh, for the wave of violence that followed, uh, anybody that says that they were surprised, you know, is not, in, is not looking at the reality of so things. So I get the picture from you that that kind of uh, abuse of people from different races is bubbling, is te the tension is there all the time, it's Absolutely. bubbling there all the time and it takes one in incident Absolutely. like that to blow yeah. it out. Now, I always wanted to ask somebody who's from Nigeria, I wanted to ask, do I call you a black man? But you, you, you did refer to in your little intro there, you said um, when another black man was killed in America. Is that the right term? Is it the wrong term, a black man? Well, it, to, to different people, uh, that word black will, will resonate so many different issues. Uh, I personally, if, if you call me a black man, uh, I take it, but I, I, I believe, I, I kind of look at you and say you're naive, because uh, when you kind of uh, put me in a category without knowing me, you've already judged me to be black, so, which uh, you are the only good thing you. What's wrong with being black? Because the only good thing you're looking at me, uh, you, you're seeing in me, is my color. You've not, you've not put in effort to know who I am. Uh, I don't think the first thing you want to know is, uh, am I black? Uh, there's more potential about me. Why not start from something else, trying to know who I am, than want to know my outer skin? And if you call but if me, I said to you, Stanley. I said to you. Um, I know I'm white, so I know that you're different than me in, skull, in skin colour, and to me you're a black man, okay? Mm. Now I don't think, uh, I'm not looking in terms of racism, and anyway, by the way I'm a good Christian and I see yeah. everybody in their own light, and I like to, to talk to people and see how, what you make from them. I like to treat people the way they treat me, uh, and don't go by colour of skin. But I'm trying to get the feeling here, the feeling between being white and being black. 
Like there are places where white people are hated as well in black areas. Yeah, but I, but I would never judge. Why any do we hate our skin so much, or why do we hate people with different skin so much? Well, that would go back to the Cornilla days. It go back into centuries. You know the, uh, and I don't I don't like believing in old stories. I live in the twenty first century, and that's what I want to uh, focus on. But um, if you want to dig back, uh, it goes way back how the black, uh, you know, use that word again, black um, uh, people have been treated. You know, it's, it's documented. You can Why watch. Why were they treated like that? Because uh, the, 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 the white scholar skin uh, 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 human beings believe the, the black colored skin people well, are inferior. Here, yeah. Uh, I'm uneducated. Uh, might be, they might, but they might at, that, at that stage they might be uneducated, but you, that does not give you the justification to treat people that bad. Uh, they were put on handcuffs. Now, this I'm going back. I'm only just reading history. I'm not. Yes, I'm I, I was not roots, there. I'm, I was not there. So I'm roots. only just uh, uh, reading from what is documented. But anyway, uh, if if when you, let me just go back to when you call if somebody calls me a black person, if, if, as a Nigerian. In Africa, and Nigeria is one of the African countries. If you call me a black person, now that is a different story. If you are living in Africa, because um, in Africa I'm a light-colored black skin. Now, for somebody calling me a black person, uh, say somebody from Kenya, what are you going to call him? Mm. Now, th that's why I said ignorance comes in. What are you going to call somebody from Kenya? Because somebody, anybody, people from the uh, southern, uh, southern part of Africa are very, very dark skinned. They are equally as black as that, you know. Mm. So when you put, if the person is sitting next, next close to me, he's light, I'm more light skinned than him. I'm actually not a black person, I'm a lighter skinned brown uh, human being. But for the fact that somebody sees me and the only thing the person can see without even knowing who I am, we just refer to me as a black yeah. person. I find that uh, that's like the What does that way. black person see when he sees somebody like me? I, I just see, I, when I see people, uh, whoever it is, I say that lady, fellows, I don't use that white person. I never use that word because I would rather want to know your name than trying to assume uh, who you are. Talk less of even trying to, you know, put you in the category of white and black. Mm. I think that if we as a human being move away from color things, yeah. the world will be even colored. Better. As I yeah. say, a colored man means yeah. a man. Yeah. What does a colored man mean? Um, Marissa, I want to bring you in in there. Um, uh, I myself don't like s people checking out people on the color of their skin. As I say, li you know, treat people the way you want to be treated is my motto. And the Christian motto goes a long way. But uh, it causes so much trouble, and you can tell me some stories of, of you, you are a mixed race person, mm -hmm. and um, you can tell me some stories of, of how people from different races were treated. Well, if I have to talk about my country, I need a lot of time about how people were treated. And uh, you can't always just say that a particular race or group did this, because even in those groups, there, there, are, there are some decent people who, like you saw with the death of jo George Floyd, there are other people there too who, who don't agree, you know, with that type of thing. But for me, prejudice is in the head most of the time. A lot of people are prejudiced about anything. You can say that, Marissa, that's great saying that. And yeah, and I agree with you, but yeah. when it's rioting on the street, that's not a good no, thing No, that's either. where I'm going with that. Most of the time it's in the head. A lot of people don't do anything about it. They think it. And as long as they think it, we're safe. It's when they put it into action. That's when it affects us. It's like, like, like George Floyd. It's when you kill a man so brutally for the whole world to see with your hand in your pocket, with our children and grandchildren watching as if to say, see, it's okay. <laughs> These people don't need to be here. Then it changes. Then this is total discrimination. This is hatred. This is prejudice at its highest level. But that's in a lot of places. We've seen it's in America. It's rampant in America. It's all now. over. It's all over. It's in Nigeria. It's in South Africa. 
you have been, I'm not going to get to, to talk about your experience in Ireland yet, but I'm going to say is that we've been, you know, like, you know that in this country here, we have for all of our lives lived um, many, many, many years until the last 10, 20 years without seeing any other nationalities in our country until the EU came in. And like to see somebody of a different colour walking down the street. Now, I, I'm afraid. I don't know whether I call them a different. I, I don't know what to call to see somebody. Sorry, from another con country. That's not France. You know, to see somebody with another skin colour walking down a street about 20 or 30 years ago was was quite unusual. They stood out yeah. and you, you call them the colour of their skin. Now, it's not like that in Ireland now anymore. Um, we've got little we've got like so many children in Cavan from with with histories from all over the world and they've got great Cavan accents. So <laughs> they're one of our own, you know. So they they've gone to our schools and your son plays plays rugby, is it or yeah. he plays Blue rugby, rugby. For, for the local rugby club. Like that's great. We're all integrated now. But how do you think my question is, how do you think Ireland could learn from this incident in the George Floyd incident in America? Ireland is doing great than most other other countries. They're doing a fantastic job here. Uh, I want to just take you back a little bit and just tell you how Ireland looked 20 years ago when I, 21 years ago when I came. It's totally different, you know. And uh, between Ireland and other countries, I, I have friends that were living in Germany and Sweden, you know, compare my life and my integration. Uh, I am way above, you know, uh, top of the hill. To where now, they are. What you mean? You were accepted. I was. Way I, above I was. Them. Yeah, I was accepted, but not just uh, the local community accepting me. I dug my way into that tunnel of you know cultural by integrating myself into the culture. Um, I did not wait for the local community to accept me. I went out and I did what I have to do to integrate faster which also brought me to know Marisa yeah. and which also brought him to know other other people. That's good for you, Stanley. You're the lucky one. You're the smart one. But for the, the people who may not be able to help themselves for whatever reason, how do you think they feel in Ireland today? Um, it's, it's not been rosy for everyone. Even mm. I also have my so, own time. So tell me about that. Uh, so okay. tell me about that. Um, at, the, at, the, I, at the early stage when I came in here in 1990, um, things were not rosy, you know, you don't have your ways. Uh, people tend to look at you very funny, people tend to, uh, you walk into places, you know, they just well, what do you call that? Do you well, call that's that, racism. Do you, you know? or do you just think like, these, these Irish people, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm probably being racist in saying yeah. this, but it's such a broad thing, I don't know, I'm probably opening my mouth and putting my big yeah. foot in it. But these people are probably looking at these guys and they're saying, God, you know, these lads now, um, um, I don't know what to make of them because I haven't, we haven't, we, we, we didn't go to school. Yeah. We, we went to school with our cousins. Yeah, you know what I mean? So can you see it from our point of view? It may not have been raised. It was just curiosity maybe. But what I can say is ignorance and lack of exposure. And I keep saying that word because that's what, that's the most nicest way for me to tell you what's going on. And that's how I assess things. Now, ignorance means um, you are seeing things you have no clue about or you cannot control or you don't know how to respond to it. Now, lack of exposure is you've not been around the world to learn other people's way of life, to accept that I have my own way, they have their own way, we, are, we can coexist. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom point. Until mm -hmm. the very first people I met that combined those two elements are the people that can mix up very well with uh, migrants. Okay, that is what you work in the background of what you work with, Marissa, really, is with mm -hmm. communities and integration and, and helping people that are finding it different as a community activist and helping people who to get their foot and get a good stay and have a good time in Ireland. You do a lot of work with community yeah, groups yeah. like that. I work with a lot of people. I have done for many, many years. And um, anybody who is in a new country, even, even an Irish person that goes to another country, you're nervous. You're not sure. Of course, it's you, a natural you know, reaction. You, you feel yeah. they're looking at you. It's a natural and reaction. It's just yeah. natural reaction, yeah. you know. And then approaching the authorities or maybe looking for a job, you're frightened of accents, might not understand them, you know. 
You, we've, you all seen, we've all seen the posters from the 1950s, 60s, yeah. no blacks and no Irish. Yes. You know, we've suffered our, our prejudice you, too in our own way. That's it. Like, when you say when people came here first, they found, like, um, things were not, as, as Stanley said, things weren't rosy. From what sections of the community did you feel that coming from? Can you say? All sections. It wasn't rosy from my, from where I was, it wasn't rosy because... You, you sort of come, you remember a lot of the South Africans didn't just waltz in here, they were employed from South Africa. So they come with this rosy idea that I'll leave that racism behind me and, you know, leave all that nonsense, I'm sick of this country, that's my age group, you know, who've been through it from the 60s and they came here with the rosy image of we're going to be with people who understand, who are not like that. But we and didn't you, understand. We, we, yes. we, 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 were, we were told it was a shock to us. Yes, and then they came shock. and found that people didn't even know they existed. Yeah. Except one or two said, hey, I marched outside dance doors for you, you know. Mm. And what have you. And then I remember the one guy was working and the manager said, do your job or go back to Africa for you and get your seven pounds a month, you know. Then it's like, oh, it's here mm. too. Yeah. You know, but having said that, Fair play to Ireland, it's not the worst. So you have been, I've been at, we've been, Kevin, or Irish Web TV have been at some of your, your, your conferences and things like that. And you are certainly doing your best to, as you talk about the word, you said the word there, ignorance, Stanley, to make, uh, to, to inform Irish people, to tell them of your custom and to accept our customers. You know, like yeah. kind of an interchange of our customs, yeah. right? Uh, and still at the same time, ke keeping on to your own custom. Now, that's a pretty yeah. hard thing to do. Well, it, it is, it is, it is uh, to be fair, it, it is. But at the same time, we as human beings, we, we, we kind of live with try and error. We try things out, at times it might work, we try things out, at times it might not work. So what is our choice? To just sit back and let them be that way and we stay this way? It's, it's not gonna work. So that's why we went out, you know. We did not wait for, for, for the hands to be thrown open or come in, guys. If we, if we waited for that, we might be living here for 100 years, yeah. but that's going to happen. Well, that's where your role, that, your particular role was to do something like that. Yeah. God sent you to do something like that, and you're doing it very well. Can I ask you another leading question? Um, your children were born since you came to Ireland, so they're Irish born. Oh, okay, my so three kids were born. How do you find the road, the path is now for your children in comparison to you coming in at that young age? It's a rosy path for them, compared to... Can you say that with your hand on your heart? Yes. It's a rosy path for them. I'm, you know, when I mean rosy path, it's I'm not saying 100 percent. Normal, but it's, normal it's, rosy. Yeah, no. It's uh, compared to me. I, you know, if I had to compare those two two uh, routes, uh, it's a it's a it's a run to the park for them. You know, they don't have anything to worry about. You know, the racism is still there. It's still raising the you know the it ugly heads. It has so many different connotations, yeah. hasn't it? Really, we were talking earlier about um, somebody saying Black Lives Matter, and then somebody shoots you back with a post and says all lives matter so like you're getting you know like it's very hard to get it right isn't it yeah that's people true. just love raining on a parade if you say we're talking about the cats they say what about the dog yeah you say you're talking about ireland they say what about my country they just yeah, rain I, I on the parade would you ha perhaps say that the word racism is applied to a lot of things that it that it has nothing got to do with in some cases it is do you think it's too big a broad word, Yeah. Racism is a very big word. I know we, before we Probably started shooting like all me. this, when we got dived into it, I said, look, uh, where, where do we stop? You know, because everything you can, uh, you can attribute everything to nearly racism. You know, once you start being prejudiced, prejudice is also not a big word. You know, you can be mm. prejudiced on somebody's uh, way of life. You can be prejudiced on somebody's dress code. You can, where will the, where will, how are we going to wrap that up? So, having said that, the, the one that people are more of, take offense into uh, with the skin color. I think that kind of, uh, and, and I'll tell you why, because there's a history behind that. If you dress in a certain way, if I don't like that, there's no history of, behind that. If you talk in a certain way, okay, we let it go. If you write a certain way, but with the skin color, there's a history behind that, and the history is very bitter, and it's still alive. So when, when you start becoming racist, 
uh, in nature, the, uh, they look at it and find that the root of your being racist is from a skin color, you know, it really touched the heart. And with that, what you're doing, you're lighting the, the, the time bomb. You know, it's mm -hmm. just a matter of time from when that, um, you know, that conversation starts taking okay, place. Okay, so then you have racism against people of a certain color. But then you've got, then you've got when, say, people of two races come together and they have children and you've got mixed race. Now, that is a new avenue open to a lot because the world has become... Uh, um, a multipolar world. Uh, yeah, and um, we're meeting so many people that we never met before. We're going to countries we never met before, and inter race is happening. And the children of that race don't obviously they don't look like the father and they don't look like the mother. They look like the combination of both of them. They also are having a hard time. Yeah, yeah, because of their skin color. You know, the skin because color they again. can't be put into a bracket saying you're this or you're that. They're kind of, and uh, I heard somebody on a radio program the other day. Uh, oh, I'm saying white because I just wanted to give you the picture here. A white lady, and she's married to a, a coloured man, and uh, she um, they ha she had her children with her. And an Irish man looked at her and said, "What are they?" Well, that's rude. Yeah, well, it was rude from him. But can you see where he was coming yeah. from at the same time? You can time? see when you look at people, and the only first thing you can see is colour, skin. That's where the there's problem is. There's something wrong there, yeah, isn't there's, there? There's, there's something wrong. You, That's prejudice. And yeah. how do we get rid of that, Stanley? Well, education. Seen... Okay. Enlightenment. Good. That's what we're doing, Marissa. Mm -hmm. yeah. Education, enlightenment, more exposure. You know, we can do so much. We can take all this out. It's for them to come in and want to learn also. Hmm. You know, uh, uh, we have a friend. and It's, it's actually a, 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 a very local, um, Irish uh, local. In, in town here, before we became very close, he has a different way he looks at us, right? Mm -hmm. And he said this himself. But until he started sitting down with us, spending time, getting to know us, his attitude and all the thinking for the past five years, you know, he used to... Uh, that That's why integration is everything. That's why we promote integration. That's why we have the seminars. We are saying, here we are, we're the same as you. We want mm. what you want. We dream the same dreams. We have the same goals. We are one. As you said a few times, you're a Christian. That means there's one creator that makes us one. It's that simple. We just want people to see that, you know. So Stanley, I think I asked you this, but I don't know if I'll get it out right. But if, if somebody just wanted to describe you particularly in a room, Call me that fellow. Just basically that. Just call me that fellow. You're not coloured. You're not black. Because if you're you mention, Stanley. yeah, I'm Stanley. If you don't know my name, just said hi, that gentleman over there. Walk up to me. And there's no and need. There's no need for anybody else to say anything else. Nothing else. That lady there, or that gentleman over there with the white shirt. Exactly. You use. You don't, as a white Irish person, you don't call another Irish person that white person there. No. So why do you want to use that on me? Okay. Why you want to say, oh, that fellow over there? You use that word. The fellow is that I many Irish slang so that we use. So you're saying, Stanley, there's no need for this color description at all. Please, if we, we can get if we can get color away, our life will be less hassle. Just don't use. There's thousands of English words that you can use. Mm. That bloke over there. That fellow over there. That gentleman over there. That geezer. That geezer. Call me whatever <laughs> you want to call me. But don't look into my skin. Hey, okay. I had a friend who introduced me. This is my friend, she said, exactly. from South Africa. She's half cast. <laughs> There's a guy she that called me. She that all the bro. time. It's that bro over there. It's so funny, and I just smiled. Yeah. Because when you start labeling me with color, where are you going to stop? Only, let me tell you, there's a story. Uh, this happened about 12 years ago. I used to live in Navan then. Um, now I to Calvin. Yeah, I, do I went to, <laughs> I, I donated blood. And uh, I went in and I donated some blood and, you know, everything goes on. But this guy knew, and I had a, uh, a co-worker, he was in an accident and so bad, you know, they were looking for blood and I went in and my blood kind of matched up and I donated and that's it. So, a couple of years, I think it kind of, you know, out of the hospital and he recovered very well. But I was talking to my friend, a friend of mine, 
and um, he's uh, um, he's from I don't know Germany or something like that. So I, we're kind of getting into conversation, and I said I donated the blood, and he said, "Who did you donate?" I said, "Oh, my Irish friend." He said, "Your blood and his blood. Why you? I, blood is blood. Blood has no color. I donated blood to him, so I do not. I'm not. I wasn't looking at him as if he's white." I'm not looking at him as he's brown or whatever it is. I just donated my blood. And my blood, blood, the blood group matched and went in. So me and him are one. The outer skin is the only thing. Every DNA in my body, every cell is the same thing. Uh, my DNA might be different because, you know, I'm different. But all my uh, cells, everything that makes me a human being as a man is the same thing in him. The outer skin is the only thing that is different. Okay, then what about your cultures might be slightly different than ours as well? How do you blend that? With culture. Uh, we did a course on mm -hmm. culture. Yeah. Culture, all, believe it or not, uh, my culture and the Irish culture are nearly 50% the same, but in a different dimension. Hmm. Uh, if, I, if I was born here, like my kids, their DNA might not say they're from Ireland, right? But their culture is an Irish culture. So culture determines where you live, the location of where you're, where you're born or where you grew up. If I live in front of the 60 years, which it, whenever I speak to my brothers and I go back to Nigeria, they don't, they, my sister tells me, you don't behave like a Nigerian anymore. And I do. Mm -hmm. you know, but she's not looking at me like that because she sees me that I've, adopted, I've, uh, I've kind of ad adopted the European life of style and the way I do things is quite different. To them, uh, they, 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 they say I'm a kind of a European culture. Uh, but to me, at, at the same time, okay, I'm, I'm still the Nigerian, I still have the You're culture. You're still holding on to some yeah. of the culture. But there are some things in some cultures that are very sort of um, barbaric in comparison to what other cultures think. And I'm talking about fem female mutal genitation. Mm -hmm. And uh, now that is, that is hard. On, that is a horrific thing, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, it can cause death. So if that's part of your culture, you don't see anything wrong with that. That's not part of my it's culture. Not part of no, not culture, yours particularly, yeah. but if it's part of that person, sorry, not, not you in particular, but if it's part of that person's culture, they don't see it wrong. They believe it's right to do they, it for a reason. See, this is thousands that causes, of years that causes of culture. problems as well, you know. They circumcise boys. No, no yeah. problem there. You know. I'm sure there is if you're a little boy. <laughs> Well, the, yeah. the Jews circumcised yeah. seven days, I think the Muslims before, 40, 40 days, days and so on. Yeah. And so on. These are other people would look at that of years old cultures yeah. that we have decided one day when we woke up that it's not right. So like the traveler, he liked to hold on to his identity. Maybe they just want to hold on. I'm not saying it's right. But we are interfering with something that is older than as old as this earth. And they believe it's right, and we believe it's wrong. But so then how, there's how a does lot. that work then, when you have a right and a wrong? Well, who says if it's right or wrong? Ah, uh, well, some people, some, who some makes children, the decision? Some, people, some children have died from it. From children die from giving birth at the age of 11 and 12 in some okay, countries, because they get married to old men. Others die of starvation, there's no food in their countries. Others die from abuse, of being slaves. How do you heal the world? We, we just go where we think it works, but and is we it, pick but is it that. Not, just say female, uh, gen you know that, what a uh, yeah. genital yeah. proof. Yeah. That's not natural to the body, so how can it be right? It's, of course it's not natural, neither circumcision. But so, we uh, have so to make a decision on, that's why I said, we decide which one hurts and which one doesn't. The human mind is very odd. It makes decisions that are wrong there. So is it fair that a parent should make that decision for a little No one should make a decision girl. that hurts anybody. But they are doing it for so long, you need to get in there maybe and teach them differently. Teach them. How do you change culture? How do you stop the Irishman from eating cabbage and bacon? For hundreds of years, <laughs> this is his culture. Now I come in big deal, all my money, I'm coming here to help you and you're not eating cabbage and bacon anymore. It, 
I know it's a, not a good comparison. No, it's not as rough. It's not a good comparison because the other one's painful mm. and it's rough. But a lot of the girls too, they don't mind it. But then again, they don't they're have too a young to make the decision. They don't have a choice. Even if they had, they're too young to make that decision. Yeah. Mm. Their mothers, the people in charge of them, and their fathers make that decision. Okay, so to get back you to know? what Stanley said earlier, it's about um, education. Yeah. yeah. And if we could educate people to what's what, you know, what's good and what's bad yeah. for people, yeah. really. And again, speaking of being Christ-like or yeah. Christian and just yeah. believing in what's good, and don't do unto anybody what you wouldn't want anybody to, to do, do unto you. Yeah. Uh, that's my motto. Yeah. I put that up on Facebook. Never do unto others what you do want them to do yeah. unto you. I just want to continue from what Boris mm. said there. I want us to take this a little bit away f away from culture. Now, uh, it does happen in Ireland, uh, uh, female mit mit uh, what's, what do you call it? Mutilation. Mutilation. Yeah. Gen it's, mutilation. It's, yeah. Genital mutilation is wrong it's because it's not an Irish culture, right? But if you come to a country, you abide by the, the, the law of the country. Now, in some part of Africa, that is their tradition, and it's in their law, their local law which uh, still the, the, the national law still recognizes that law, right? And if they do it in, in, those, in those countries, uh, they, they, nobody raises eyebrow. If you but do it here, you're going to get into that's, serious That's trouble. the problem yeah. now. You're going to so go to jail first. If you mm. come into Ireland, you've got to abide by the Irish law. Mm. And the Irish law says that is, no, no, you don't do that. So uh, I don't know, uh, kind of condole people that do it here. Because you know very well if you come to a country, the first thing you, you learn their ways and you learn their culture. And if they allow you to stay, you have to abide by, the, uh, by their culture. So don't, don't do that here. Except when you're in Rome, you do. You do Rome, like the, yes, Roman. the Romans are but doing. Yeah. If you're looking at it, um, I know you might not like it, but that is their way of life. Centuries back in their hometown. The only problem I find is when they come here and they, they want to do it, nah, that's wrong. Because... The law states that you cannot do that. Uh, when you come in here, you're a guest to the state, you're going to respect their way of life. I still find it hard to, to understand the fact that it's right if you live in your own culture and it's wrong if you live in, and, you, and you go move to another culture. I know the laws are in there, but you know, like you're kind of saying it's right and it's wrong at the same time. I can explain <laughs> that to you. It's not right or wrong. It's for them it's okay. But because of the influence from outside, they have decided it's wrong. Now yeah. they are saying it's wrong. That's only because the outside world said it's wrong. Prior to that, they were fine, you know, until that came in. Now we all know about it. Now we're all like, oh my God, oh my God, mm. what are we going to do about it? Yeah, you're going to say Stanley. How yeah. do we hmm? can't yes, take their countries from them? These people grew up without knowing not anything else. Yeah. They grew up, their ancestors, their great grandfather grew up that same way. Their great great grandfather grandfather grew up that way. So yeah. there was generation oh, of generation lying. of culture passed to them. They know nothing else. They so know nothing else. I, I don't blame them because they, 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 there's no other alternative for them. This is what they've been taught and this is the only thing they know. And um, they don't have any let me say any influence of another kind of culture onto them yeah. for them to compare things. They only things. know one culture. They only know one culture. So it that might explains be, it from their perspective. Yeah, it might be yeah. as bad for you because you don't you don't have a clue of what the culture is, but to them, please don't judge them because they don't have any other culture to mm -hmm. compare to see if it's wrong or if it's right. Secondly, these people also are illiterate, so which means yeah, majority. majority of them do not they cannot read and write, so they cannot uh, see other, other activities or other information from other parts of the world that, or in other parts of the world, this is not done this way. So they grew up with only one culture in their head, with only one way in their head to do that. The only way they change is when they move out. Okay, yeah. Stanley, I'll ask you another serious question. Does that wreck your head then, not your head particularly, but does that wreck other people's head then when people in other countries say, oh no, that's wrong, you must stop that, it's brutal, don't do that? Yeah, Does that wreck your I, head? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't go into people's affair. Uh, I cannot solve every, everybody's problem, and I have that same motto, not to solve every country's issue. All I can do is play my little part in the world uh, 
I, I, I'm, I'm very truthful to myself to say um, I'm not the policeman in the world. So it's not going to happen. I'm not going to achieve everything, but I can achieve small. So I focused my, my resources and my attention to that small part that can make a difference. Now for me, who am I to say I want to start changing uh, a bigger community's um, life, century uh, culture? And of you course know. you will get people from all over the world, young mm, people especially, yeah. who feel like we're not going to allow this to happen, we're going to try exactly. and stop this, we're going to try and change yeah. it. But that's a very good assessment. I don't like it, like. but yeah. You know, I, I, who am I to change that? There's it's been so happened. much changes taking place as we sit here. You you look at some of these African countries. They've been like nomadic people. They walk the deserts. Been walking them for thousands the Sinai, of years. The Sinai, that's in Egypt. Isn't Absolute it? Yeah. thousands yeah. of years. The children that they have understand the desert. They understand everything about it. When they reach grasslands, they know where the water is. They know where the food is. They don't need clothes, they have their own culture going. And what have you? And then along comes our major role players. Oh, poor things, give them food, give them this, set up a lovely camp. Today, they die, they don't know how to forage. Okay. They don't understand the desert. Mm -hmm. They okay. understand nothing. The culture's gone and the help is also gone. No, but what Stanley says, go back, it's education. We need education. to educate them. And that's, if you want to do anything for these kind of people, education is the way to go. There's, there's also fear there too. If you're coming from the countries we come from, because all the people who came to educate us robbed us and left us with nothing. So maybe we're the wrong people to talk to. We don't trust. We have okay, the English. We'll get back to that. We'll know? talk a bit about um, Stanley. You mentioned before earlier, and he said one of the best. Um, we were talking about slavery and the history of slavery, slavery, and now we're seeing that um, all these statues are being torn down of these colonial people who were, you know, get, gathering up all these lands for everybody and treating people as slaves and banishing people to. It was done to us here mm -hmm. in Ireland. It was go to the Pale or to mm -hmm. the over to the West. Yeah die over there was more or less what the British told us to do when our potato uh, crop failed. And now if anybody's watching this and you know anything about history, they'll say, my God, she's crap at history, but something like that happened. But anyway, um, where's my train of thought was going there was that, um, I don't know what I was going to say now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, in, in, in lives like that, you don't need people to change your lives. You have to learn to do it yourself. That's basically yeah. what no, you, you were saying. You first need to tell the truth. If you tell a country we're coming to help you, come to help, don't come looking for its uh, resources. What can I get out of it? I'll offer them this and I'll take that. That's the problem here. Everything gets political. Are they helping? Because then I want for, something for the for last helping. 50 yeah. years, I'm 59 years old and I'm watching the same ad. We need water. We need to build a well. Zara can't see. Mm. 50 years and well, you haven't solved the problem? Mm. But Why? I was just going to say, my point was, I forgot briefly, Stanley, it's come back to my head that we have seen, we need, I mean, the other side of the world needs to be educated as much as the other side of the mm. world. We both have our, we both have our, we, we both have our needs. When I say we, I just say, you know, in general. Mm. So uh, one of the great um, programs that showed a certain, into that lifestyle was Roots. And that was a series that was out many, many years ago. Yeah. And you say that's one of the best for telling the story. If, um, if I, I would recommend that uh, a theme to anybody that is it true to story? It is a true to story. It no, is that's true a true. To life. Yes, to that's a true. Yeah, yeah, that's a true story. Kunta Kunta, the, the black chapter yeah. that acted um, the guy. Um, it's a ver it's kind of illustrate illustrate what uh, the black people in I think it was 18th century what they kind of went through in the white privileged farmers uh, sugarcane plantation in the Caribbean and in, in the northern, not, northern part of America. Uh, Roots is a very good film to watch. If you've not watched it, I recommend you do. It's and a long film, but... Uh, yeah. And you know. the one you, the film you mentioned as well, I'm sorry, I can't think of the name of no, it. 12 Years a Slave. 12 Years a Slave. It's I mean, very sad, yeah. yeah. Another... It's another... Bringing people to reality I suppose there's a well. bit of fiction in it, fiction, because you've got to make things exciting, yeah. but the truth of the matter is that's exactly, it's exactly what did happen. Mm. Okay, so get back to our modern life, and uh, Marissa, you are like 20 years in Cavan. Um, 
and you know you've seen things change but you made them change you made them change didn't you really oh yeah that's my job yeah. <laughs> is to make a was change it easy? Was, the, was the change uh, a, was there a fierce challenge against you or did or were people just waiting to be educated about this you know for, in general I'm a very easy person you know I when I came um, here it was so different they were a little confused with me. So when I opened my mouth and they go, where are you from? <laughs> you know, it was so different. There was sort of less people, more trusting, more open. But yes, in a bit of shock, all these new people coming in. And uh, myself and two other ladies, we were like trying to help people out. Like people would come and say, where's this, where's this? And so this whole idea of getting together, forming a group to help people uh, came about, but it went from one thing to the other. Mm -hmm. But um, I've always found, and I always say this, maybe it's because I also lived in America that I, I, I got to this. Irish people are quite approachable. Good. They're quite approachable now. You can make them understand they're not as hard as other countries they're actually okay and then again I don't mind the challenge okay I'm always ready I'm not a fighter I'm a talker I don't mind the challenge if I see you facing the wrong direction I won't tell you to face the right direction I'll show you mm -hmm. if I have to do it myself I will do it and that's how I work okay. is by leading Oh, okay, well done, Marissa. Just I know lead. you've done great work in all your community, Thank you very your community much, yeah. activities, and especially here in Cavan. Gold, she's gold, goldstone. Goldstone, yeah. By name and by words. <laughs> <laughs> so and we're, we've talked in depth, and uh, I don't know if there's anything you'd like to say else to say, Stanley. Just have a just want to think. add something that Marissa uh, continued uh, in her speech there. Irish people are more open, but most counties in terms of counties are more open than other counties and Cavan is one good if I categorize through my work uh, with the my current employer and my community work uh, and I've been to different counties you know through my work I've taken me down there Cavan is more uh, receptive to uh, immigrants and I'm going to tell you why which you know, but I don't think you've kind of put this into this context of, you know, from what I'm going to say now. If you go to Dublin, if you're driving, and if you're not from Dublin, uh, nobody cares about you. Just look at you and just drive off. But if you drive down into the countryside, most countryside, and um, you cross the fake space and you say they just wave and they don't know you, but they just throw their hands. You only get to see that in the rural part of Ireland. And that's the first thing that kind of um, that hit me and my wife when we moved into Cavan. I live in Virginia. I, we lived in Navan for 12 years. Uh, my, where I lived in Navan, my neighbor, my three doors neighbors, you know, they never said hello to me. Not that I care, but you know, I'm not like good friends. But nobody cares about you. But we moved into Cavan, into Virginia, not even the Cavan rural part of Cavan, and uh, we lived in Knock Temple. From the day we moved in, everybody just waves at you as if they know you. Yeah. Well, rural areas and smaller towns are inclined to be like that. That's, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's the same thing. It's a little bit more friendly, yeah. a little bit more intimate, maybe more community-based, as you find from well, When you have visitors, like, you know, from home, they all say the same thing. If I always like to take the walk. Come on, we walk into town. So they can look around, you know, past the lake and, and what have you. And the one thing that always amazes them about Ireland is you get to the road and you stand there and the car stops and you walk across. And they'll say, why is he stopping? I say, no, he wants you mm -hmm. to walk across. Are you sure? <laughs> yes, walk across. They walk across and they're like, because they think someone's going to knock them. <laughs> In South Africa, people just drive. If you're not supposed to be there, don't be there. Be where you're supposed to be. Here yeah, people will stop and they, they walk like this, like, oh, they're going to knock us. <laughs> mm. You know, and it it's, might be nothing to you because it's part of your life, it's part of your culture. Mm. 
But for someone from a country where this doesn't happen, that's wonderful. Mm. They marvel at something so small. Little things. Little like, thing. Like that. Yes. Mean marvel and at And people it. waving at you standing. Oh, no, that's yeah, that, that's, because that kind of, that kind of, kind of sweet in your heart. It does. You know, uh, you know the, if anybody waves at me, and if you tell me that person hates me, I ha it's going to be very difficult for me to believe or for me to dislike everyone in a small town that they see you, every morning they do this. You know, you feel proud. Even before talking to them, you feel part of the community. That what kicked me going in Carvin. Okay. When I saw the way people kind of received me, without even knowing my name, without even stopping having a chat with me, they already just saw me and they don't, there was no judging of my skin because they could see me very well and they could still extend a, a friendly gesture with a hand. Yeah. Mm. It's I think, nice. You know, I think, you know, if you're comfortable in your own skin, believe it or not, people get comfortable with you. If you're comfortable, if you know your worth, they see it. But if you have the chip on your shoulder, their chips come out too. Yeah, exactly. That's, a, yeah. that's how us as humans react. Yeah. Okay, guys, we've talked in depth about race, racism and what it's like to move from another country. I've never had the courage to go move out of this country, and I might say fair mm -hmm. play to you, well done, and I'm glad you're ha you're, it's rosy for you here in Ireland. I'd like to say thank you to Marissa Goldstone, I thank you for the work it. you've done in Cavan. I've known, we've, Cavan TV and Irish Web TV have known mm -hmm. you in years, and anything you do is ever, po is ever positive. And, uh, you know, nurturing to everybody. And thank you to Stanley as well, to Stanley for the great work you've done, for your multicultural events, for you taking something that we saw far off on YouTube, on a television from, on a television story from where, and bringing it here to Calvin and showing us glimpses of it and how beautiful and how warm your culture is as well. Thank you for doing that. And I hope that we can give you some of our culture back and that we can share our cultures and get the best yeah. of each culture. So I'd like to say thank you. You've one Sorry. more point. Yeah, one more point. He always has one more point. On the, on the, on the food of saying one. that, uh, the thank you should be two ways. We Africans, we always uh, extend the hand of uh, friendship. So which means if you live in my house, we should shake our hands the last time or hug. Now, you're saying thank you to me for all the work I've done. But there's one thing that the country gave to me is the ability to live here and to perform all this. So I should be the one to say thank you to Ireland. So it's a both ways. Yeah, it's both a both ways. ways. Very I, good. I'd be the one to say thank you to Ireland for giving me the greatest opportunity to be here and to show my potential, what I can do. And also it's both thank ways. you to, to people like yourself and Brian, what good is all the work if no one knows about it? Exactly. It's via Cavan TV, via the community radios that people know what we are doing. Well, we give local stories a global Absolutely. view. Absolutely, and, and thank you. And it's just there waiting to be tapped. Once mm -hmm. again, I'd like to say thank you very much to Marissa Goldstone, community activist, and for all years of living, 20 years living in Calvin, mm -hmm. and to Stanley. Stanley Noir. 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 Thank you. Uh, well done. Thank you, guys. Thank you for being part of our life here in Calvin. Hello.